Tonight's the longest night, baby. Yes, indeed, because we got through it, and now in this great daylight, or breaking a day as it is over here in the western part of the Hugh S.A., babies, ooh, we getting it right here as our wings spread out and take flight. Yes, indeed. Now, if you don't know what I mean, just stay tuned in for a little while longer. You catch on, John and Jane. Don't be a pain, man. Just flow with it. Go with it, you know. So says Grandpa, as we begin yet another exciting episode, one hour and some odd minutes into it already, of the Coyote Medicine Show, only and exclusively where but the Hazy Radio Network, baby. Love in this network you ever found since Grandpa Coyote in the morning is here to be found, man. Yes, indeed. Hanging around your heart, man, and helping you set it free. Now, just imagine, man, you know, here we are playing around with life this morning over there in the chat room, all kinds of little... Uh, fun little jokes going on, some little teases, and just a, a, a blast, babies. Uh, by the way, shout out to y'all in the chat room and everybody listening in to boot, babies. We love y'all, man. Wherever you are across the face of this earth, you're feeling that love radiating from 9,000 feet high in the Rocky Mountain sky here from the spaceship, love, and Grandpa Coyote's big old heart. Because it's about as big as yours, right? You bet, man. We got it together, man. And if mine's a huge heart, then so must be yours. So must be everyone else's, too, babies. We ain't these miserly little self-centered dweebs we've been pretending to be, man. Well, anyway, speak for yourself, but... <laughs> Darlings, we're getting it all right, man. You just got to remember, the only way to do it is relax, and then you take flight, man. Anytime you're pushing it, Oh, God, for years when I was flying, I was pushing it, man. Pushing myself, pushing it beyond the envelope. Always trying to fly a little higher, do a little better, but always kind of like, you know, tense. And couldn't quite get over that, you know. And then I had this moment come one time when I was not flying. I was out hanging on out on a mountain, communing with the spirits and so forth. And wow. In comes this cosmic memory, this shadowy, drifty memory of a lifetime where I was flying along in an airplane. That's the memory I have. It was a low wing, by the way, so it's pretty progressive for its time. But one of them low wings fell off and took a dive into the ground. <laughs> Well, I guess I was it, man, you know, and next thing you know, my soul's uh, flowing up there towards the sun along with everybody else's. Man, there was a lot of people dying that day. Must have been bombing the piss out of places. There was a lot of people going down that day, and we all was like it was a war going on, man, yeah. Then when that wing fell off, but it didn't get shot off, it fell off. It's poor design, man. Somebody didn't make the strut strong enough inside the wing, man. <laughs> Anywho, it's kind of a new design for its day, so it's understandable it could happen, you know. But anyway, I'm drifting away now because I'm dead. I'm in the smoky little heap down there in that plane that wrecked. It didn't catch on fire and we just plowed into the ground, just corkscrewed down and hit her pretty straight on, man, you know. And so the body was kind of intact, just crunched up on the inside and deader than a doornail, you know. Of course, I didn't know all that going away. I was just drifting away as souls do, man. You feel the call of the heart, you... Uh, Go home, man. You know, it's time, you know. Got to go get another regenerative start, you know. So there we are floating up into that big stream of life. There's souls all around me. We're all narrowing down to a funnel-like thing, going up into what looks like the sun, the great light in the sky, you know, which is like the sky is like what we are, too. It's all together. I mean, wow, what a feeling. What a sight, you know. But then I felt this pull from this earth side, you know, a little tug at my heart, a little heaviness. And I realized I was leaving somebody behind that I really cared about, you know. And if I had anything to do with it, I wasn't about to do that, you know. And as a soul presence, I made the choice to come diving back in here to that dead little body to grab it somehow. Now, don't ask me how this worked, because I couldn't explain it in a gazillion years, but it did work. 
You know, the little little soul just dropped in there, grabbed hold of that busted up body and says, Hey, you're going to work for a while and get me across these pockmarked fields because the bombers on their way back from wherever they've been got extra bombs. They drop them out here in the farm fields, you know, get rid of them. They won't be flying around with live bombs in their belly, you know. So anyway, wow. So we had to dodge around a bunch of that and trek about three miles, which is what, about five kilometers to you... Uh, uh, Britishers over there and the rest of you that have all that metric stuff, poor kids. But anywho, about three miles away, there's this little house. And somehow or another, I made that body pass out and, and uh, expire in an orchard behind that house so I could keep my ghost around, my soul around, and hang out with this presence that I was so uh, familiar with that I couldn't leave uh, her, as it turned out, as it was a her, uh, behind man, you know. Yeah, she was a, a a gorgeous lady in her own right, had a good heart, but ooh, it was grieving then, not only over the loss of this one, but another one too that had gone away in a different way, you know. This war was a brutal thing. This poor woman been living there alone, working her tail off for the cause of peace when nobody's looking, you know, so she wouldn't get herself shot. But wow, you know, and she and I had only, uh, from what the memory was there, had only known each other for a brief amount of time, had a brief encounter, nice little afternoon picnic on a river bank, you know, some place where there was a little green grass left in the midst of all that turmoil, you know. And that's what I remembered, and that's what I was hanging out there for, because, man, I realized as I was passing on and felt that tug on my heart that this was somebody that I knew anciently and that I really hadn't been around much throughout all these lifetimes. The, you know, it was a, a, a chance encounter probably designed very well by the universe, as they always are, but a chance encounter a moment, you know. And in wartime, baby, you take your moment when it comes, because you know you're not going to live much longer. You know your life is expendable, and it, you could be gone at any moment. So when real sweetness, love, and light comes your way, man, you're making love on the riverbank, for you know what happened. And son of a gun, if you ain't departing from this life and expanding into other dimensions as you do, it's like, wow, in the midst of this ugly war, something like that had gone on between this person and I. And it's like, son of a gun, how, can, how could I depart from that? That's ancient. That's like, wow. You know, it. <laughs> you know, so like, I got away with it for a while. All I could do was hang around and kind of communicate with her heart. But that was good enough, man. I mean, I felt her grief and her pain. I bore it all, man. But, you know, as a soul presence, that's no big deal. You don't feel it like you do in the body, you know. You just take it, you know. So it softens the blow for the other. And you prop them up that way energetically and help them get through it. And somehow or another, one of my friends that was still alive came by and... and um, shared with her some of my mementos that I didn't even know I had, you know what I mean? <laughs> Stuff I'd stashed away so long ago I'd forgot about it, you know? And so anyway, she had a little bit of presence of my person with her there. I knew, I could see in the timeline she wouldn't be living too much longer anyway, so if the angels come and caught up with my ass, you know, wouldn't be too big a deal if I had to leave, and sure as heck they did. Yeah, of course, because, you know, some people are busier than others, and they just didn't want me to get to hanging around too long down here and get used to the earth reality as a soul presence, because then I might get stuck, you know. So they had to get me out of here, so they made me this promise that, you know, next lifetime around, or what, or maybe the one after that, but real quickly, soon, you guys get to be together for the rest of forever, you know, because we're just about out of time. You know you know what the story is, man. I look him right in the eye and I say, okay, guys, I can do this, but here's the deal, man. you got to help me make it real and make it right. I didn't even know what I was talking about or what I was calling for as a soul presence when, you know, I made those demands on my fellow angels, you know. Anyway, I partied off with him. We went back up there to the sun, went through the other side and all that good stuff. And I come back as another bouncing little baby some other time, some other place, didn't I? Yeah. See, and uh, by golly, that dream, that promise has been fulfilled so many times I can't even count it. Because I've encountered that presence in every other person I've met in this life. 
not necessarily genderized either, but especially in the genderization of feminine men. I see her everywhere. You know, it's like that's the mythical MJ to me. I mean, she's in all of us, you know. And really, it's hard for me to make distinctions between them, though I can appreciate persons and characteristics and, you know, all the challenges that, and uh, benefits that go with them. I mean, we're quite the experienced practitioners in the area of love, yet, you know, moments like that that I just described that turn cosmic on you are still kind of rare here, aren't they, you know? We're just starting to catch on, you see, and, and it's just... It's kind of a new thing, this level of love. Because it's not so obsessional, it's not possessive whatsoever. But it is very distinctive. And it is very... Uh, flows in its own direction and has its own place, its own partners, etc. You know what I mean? It's a different frame of living. And I'm not saying there isn't a twin flame or a, a bunch of soulmates, of course, you know. Look at all the different lives we must have lived and how many different partners we must have had, eh? So, you know, to think that there's just one, which there is, that's you. And it's in her, too, or him, or whomever you happen to be hanging out with, and it don't matter the gender. I mean, you know, we make no distinctions. In, in uh, paradise, you know, we see these things and we embrace them and enjoy them, but it's not so much a distinction because characteristically we're pretty much the same and you know it's those very characteristics the ones that unify that match that make us a little closer to whatever specialty we are that draws us together the familiar things you see because some soul essences come from a presence that's part of you you know and others come from a part of something else too you know what i mean so you can have a very familiar connection. When you're living in this dumbed-down world of 3D here on Earth, well, it's pretty amazing to have to all of a sudden have a cosmic uh, connection spring up on you like that. And nine times out of ten, it'll blow you out of the water, and you guys will not continue it. It'll just be a one-time deal because, you know, times weren't right. And that was enough right there, because it went cosmic and blew you away, you know. And say 200 years ago, going cosmic, man. Can you imagine that? You know, I mean, it didn't fit with the territory now, did it? So you couldn't hang around too much longer after that. They'd kill you anyway. <laughs> Can't be too progressive, you know what I mean? <laughs> See, so the timing had to be just right. Everything had to be just right. And so it is right now. Right here in this moment, all the promises made to all the dying folks through the generations, and the angels make plenty of them. And if you think about it, you'll remember some of them inside of your heart. Maybe not so much in words, but in the feelings of them and what you feel reassured about. That sure as hell this time around, we finished the job, babies. We ain't bouncing down again, man. Enough is enough. And we've served our time, and we did it well, man. So now we just... Bring the paradigms back together so we don't have to worry about death anymore. Then all this grieving and all this sense of loss and separation and guilt that goes and shame that goes with it is just out the window. Because we're living continually and forever and we do so in a very equitous way without aging. And we see each other as the precious and divine hearts that we are. We experience the full presence of each other upon contact. I mean, there is... No absence of person anywhere here. No one's alone. No one's a hermit, though we sure tend to be sometimes, don't we? Yeah? Yet we're partying fools, see? No one's alone. When you're alone, you're together with everything, and that's when you begin to experience it. That's what the hermitage is all about. You have your time there in order to get yourself filled up on life and remember all this stuff, because cosmically you already have it. You already know it. It's just a matter of opening it up and remembering what it is, see? Then you can move forward in what I call the flow, the love, the direction of love, which is life in motion, love in motion, which is life in motion. <laughs> we like that one. Dance, dance, dance. And there you are, babies, you know, uh, finding that one in everyone, because that one is you. And it's her or him, too. I mean, it's a together thing, yet... You are perfectly divine and gathered and collected with everything inside of the presence of this person that you are. And you want or need for no thing. And the reason being 
says, man, you know, you're taking that step past death. And when death is no longer of such a concern to you, then the things that would have otherwise harmed you and so forth are not such a threat anymore. You see, you move beyond that place, out of the pure love that you have. So that then what? You can reunify with those like that person I described in that past life memory that came to me and got me all loosened up so I could fly again. Shit. Y'all see me do it now. Well, it's been a while since I've done it now, so I'd be a little rusty, but, you know, you set me down a little plane seat. I could fly that thing seat to the pants all the way across the country, man, you know, and do a darn good job of it just because I have the relaxation and realized I had the competence and that I had it coming in. You know, it's kind of fun, really, you know. That's when it started to be, that's when loop-de-loops and hammerhead stalls and barrel rolls with qualified pilots, I didn't do them myself, was, you know, an acceptable thing where before those, those things had kind of terrified me. I didn't want to do aerobatics. I just wanted to get up and fly straight and level over somewhere. Well, maybe drift around. Well, maybe. <laughs> See, I really wanted to be the bird. That's what I wanted. I didn't want no gasoline engine pulling me through the sky, you know. I just wanted to be free to fly the way you are when you're a soul presence, you know. And you just float with the reality and go where it takes you. Well, babies... We're beginning to realize a state like that. That's what the joining of the realms is all about, see. Because then you can live in the phys physicality. It'll change a bunch from where it is now, but it's still the same basic carcass, you know. <laughs> the temple of love, as I call it. The temple of truth. The housing of the universal heart. The same heart in everything, you see. We're just coming conscious to such presences and what that really means, you know. And there's a richness in it all. And you know, when we have little flashes of memory like that to help rehabilitate ourselves in this life, and we start to realize the more multidimensional characteristics of the lives we've already lived, then we start to realize, of course, a little more of the multidimensionality here. And in actuality, those dimensionalities dissolve away. You just don't see the vision any longer between you and those who didn't seem to be living, who maintained themselves as soul presences. The idea, the conception of a separate world where you have to go through the light of the sun, basically, to pass back and forth between the universes, as we call them from here, <laughs> over there it's a different story but you know now over there becomes here so we begin to remember and understand as we do over there and stories such as what I've just told aren't so rare in this reality now are they man and you see we're just coming back to life we're just catching on like we never have before because the timing's just right and we've seasoned ourselves up just right and we've done our our prison sentence to, to the maximum term of it. And, I mean, speaking of how we've been housed here in this restricted earth, that's a prison to me, you know, but not a, a miserable one, but one where it sure could be if you wanted it to be, you know. Wow. Anywho, that dissolves away. And now, through the eyes of love, that which sees and knows everything and knows its purpose and understands its well. That the, the, uh, uh, we come forward and just live, be living in that space. Maybe it changes everything. There's nothing to fear because you can't die. You know, there are no ghosts and goblins, so nobody can scare you with a bunch of BS. And if, you know, somebody tosses a nuke or two at you, you just laugh them away because they're laughable. They're such primitive things. I mean, anybody, a baby child of the universe can decommission any of them just by willing it to be so from the heart, and so we do. They become little butterflies floating in the air. Plutonium is not a harmful thing, and neither there's any other form of so-called radiation or any other poison. If you can't die, what do you want, got to worry about? All you got to do is live and just be. And see, and then... Because there's no big hurry, love can take its dear sweet time and develop as it will. You see, and time becomes kind of irrelevant. It just doesn't hardly exist anymore. And it's not a real thing anyway. It's just a measurement of day and night. And if things aren't divided like that, if there isn't the day and night, the living and the dying, then there's no death. 
There's nothing to fear. And babies, we got it on. We got all the time we need to be what we need, to live it as we will, and be who and what we feel like being. Given from the pure, innocent love of our heart. And sees everything so clear. See, darlings, that's why you draw, and draw near. And you know, we have a lot of fun with it, and we should. You know, I mean, this was divine, designed to be a real enjoyable place if you just let it be, you know. But in order to do that, you really have to let this love be your life. Otherwise, it ain't going to be much fun. It's always going to be a little misdirected. And then no matter what you're going through, it's going to hurt, you know, because it's not in confluence with the flow. <laughs> At least it don't appear to be. There's a longer story to that that I can't even get into right now. But it's all about the multidimensionality and how we live through it. And how perspectives could be isolated, but not persons, not souls. I mean, we're really always present in all extensions of life and all the levels, dimensions. So really, there was no division. This was a perception we created to live in for a while. Whew, that's a mouthful. And I ain't going any further with that either, baby. That's a pretty good story right to where it is, right? See, we're all finding our expansion and our growth in our own way. And you know, we should be delightfully teasing one another and playing with one another as if we really enjoyed one another. And we're not, you know, trying to seduce or trap or mislead or anything. I mean, our intentions to each other are as pure as pure can be. And when you hang with people like that, it's because you're hanging with that kind of per person inside of yourself, baby. P -p 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 person. As old uh, Mel, what's his name, the country singer, the stuttering guy could sing like a charm. Anyway, yeah. P -p 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 person, man. There you go. Yeah. Live it, be it, because you are the love of it, see. And this, when this love takes you beyond death, as it has now, well, darlings... Let the formula be what it will, eh? We're here to live it, enjoy it, play with it, poke at it, have a good time with it, know that everything we're doing is just all right with the universe. And if it seems misbehaving, well, there's always these correcting energies. We don't have angry parents watching over us. Well, we do have our parental energies watching through the eyes of others the things that we do and, and are allowed to alter our states of progression when things tend to get out of hand because you know being the kids that we are we didn't always know how to handle the creative structures that we lived in did we <laughs> but we learned we ripened we're seasoned and grown now and you know our teachers are really our family which is a reflection of our own heart each and every one of us you see the whole creation around us flows through us. It's our heart in motion. It's just what it is. And that's the way it should be. Because that's the way we made it. Don't you see? <laughs> How's that for a little strolling through the park for a little morning wake-up call? Man, did I do that gentle enough for you? I mean, ooh, there's so much more to go, though. There's so much more of a tale to tell, but... You know, you'll unravel that from your own heart in your own divine and mysterious ways. But understand that really the unity we feel is, yeah, we're doing this together. And like yesterday, you know, is yesterday and it's gone away. And today, you know, we no longer hide our hearts and souls. We come out to play inside of this physical presence, knowing that we can't be harmed or hurt in any way that the old things they throw at us man don't work anymore and that we become like a self-correcting unit in this reality of things are out of sync around us well they tend to want to get back in sync pretty fast and no one stands in the way of this kind of bliss this kind of love this kind of pure expression when they feel it they become it and none can stand in your presence that won't receive and be it, you know, won't receive of it and be it, you know. So, you know, it kind of defines your whole life in a new sort of way. And so pretty much every connection you have after that is a pure one. And you never have to worry about being taken advantage of or belittled because someone else doesn't feel right about whatever it is you're doing or what you represent in this reality. 
the threat has gone away. Everybody's comfortable in their own skin because you are. And growing and to be a, 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 an enlightened being, a, a being that is visibly enlightened. Not just, you know, somebody that's really super smart and knows the universe. No, that's, that's a piece of doo-doo, that one. But the one that really understands what the universe is and how creatively it lives through the person that you are, that's the one, see? We live it that way because we love it that way. Because we are that way. We just allowed ourselves to experience it some other way for quite some time, wouldn't you say? I think it's time, babies. You know, we just unwind a little bit, you know, and just be, you know, allowing, willing. Yeah, just let those loving arms surround you, baby. And just let them hold you. And I'm talking about the loving arms of the mother that come through the mystical realm that really have never released you from her heart. You know, even though you're a separation in creation, more or less, as a person, you're the person of the mother stepping forward as the person you are, representing, of course, not just representing, carrying her forward in you and passing that forward into other generations too as we all do till we get to now so what do you do now if you can't if you're not going to die if you've already faced that moment and come back to life what are you going to do now you know see what you got nothing to be afraid of and all you can do here is share that vision of living with everyone else that's living especially those that are still sleepwalking you know and how do you share that? Well, you certainly don't go out proselyting or, or being an actor in a big play or something, but oh, maybe that'll be part of it, but doubt it, doubt it. You just radiate. You see, it's a whole different way of being. You don't have to convince anybody of different, anything. Their own turmoil will lead to their own blessings and their own straightening it out. And you don't have to push them or pull them to do it. You do that in here and by allowing this peaceful presence to be maintained in yourself. So you no longer feel the agony of division and separation inside. And that's the energy you share wherever you go and others will feel it and receive it because they're in that field with you. We're that unified with all of life. So don't be afraid to let yourself feel the whole part of yourself and to be willing to step beyond death if you really honestly are doing it, can do it. Of course you can. Nothing's impossible here. See, you've been involved in a struggle inside of yourself that's pretty much worn you out and that's what brings everybody to the moment of death. It's a transition. It's when you reach the end of your rope here. You've done your experience and you have took all you can take and you're ready to get out. It's a soul presence. It's a, a, a choice made at a soul presence. And that's why, you know, it seems so weird when you're running around, especially in a war zone, but you know, our highways and byways here in this country are kind of like war zones, or were. I think they're calming down a bit, thank goodness. But, you know, it, it's that same kind of feeling you get when you're out there. and You see people die from, you know, stuff they never should have even thought about hurting them, let alone killing them, you know, a little 30 mile an hour accident somewhere. And you see other people get away with spectacular accidents and walk away from it very much alive still inside of their person. And it just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense until you start to understand what's really going on here. And it's a soul experience, it's a soul presence that determines, you know, the journey of the heart. And if your time ain't come, babies, you, the angels are there and you're going to get out of it slicker than a whistle. If your time has come, well... It's going to be as merciful as it can be in the moment that it comes, believe me. Hardly anyone gets to experience the harsh side of that. It's, you're gone before you ever get there, you see. And the rest get to die more or less naturally. So it's not a bad deal. The death thing, you know, that's why we hooked up with it. Because it was a tolerable thing viewed from a soul presence. We knew it would try us to the maximum on this side of it. But that was another reason for the test of it and why we chose to season ourselves through it for so many generations now. <laughs> they tell me it's a billion years. I don't think years really matter. And I don't think you can count the time, really. But whatever it is, it's a good long while. But we made the journey. And how? 
So babies, I just want you to tell today, it's all untwisting Tuesday to settle back, relax, and let it come to you. And if you have to get out there and play in the light of this beautiful day, well, babies, make it that. Enjoy what you're doing or don't do it, really. Just don't be forced in any direction. But don't, you know, hurt yourself over it either. Don't do stupid things, but do what you can to make it as enjoyable for yourself today as possible. Give yourself all the time you need to gather together with your own heart presence and get to know what that really and truthfully is and get to understand the power in that and how quickly you can change things without having to be a fighter. The war's long since over and warriors have no place here. You see, you've held your heart together now. Now you step beyond the conception of warrior. The rebellion is over. The flow of love lived in truth is what is now for you and many like you and for the rest of this earth as it happens too. We're just going to take all the sweet time we need because we got all the sweet time we have and it doesn't matter exactly when, where, and how, and who with. It doesn't because that just comes. All that stuff takes care of itself in the form of the divine intelligence flowing us along in the flow of creative love, which is love in motion, the life we live. Wow! What a mouthful, man! I tell you, uh, my job, my jaw muscles, oil can, oil can, somebody bring me to the oil can, my jaw muscles are getting bad again. <laughs> Darlings, we got it on. No matter which way it's going, or how spun you or others around you, usually it's others around you might be, Hold that space. Stay where you are right now. Don't let anybody shake you away from it. And recognize that nothing really can. And that all you got to do now is relax and let it happen. You know, because it's happening and we're bringing it together like magic. That's what we're here to be and do, babies, and finally we get to do it. Okay? Is that all right with you? I mean, is it time now? I think so, baby. Thanks for being here on this Coyote Madison show. The rock and roll that soothes your soul and brings forward your heart with two eyes to make your heart large and a lot of thoughtful from projections from up here at 9,000 feet high in the Rocky Mountain skies. Old Grandpa flies along with you here on the Spaceship Love, man. At the helm here in Studio 420. Now, how many definitions can we give it? See how many levels we just went through? <laughs> Explaining who and what we are and how we be doing it. It's the Coyote Medicine Show on the Hazy Radio Network, don't you know? Yeah, simply put, baby. But sometimes we just like to add all the accoutrements because it makes it more colorful and a little more interesting. In fact, downright exciting every now and then. Hey, eh? Oh, baby, spread them wings. Don't let nothing get in your way. Here you go again, baby. Ooh, he says with a grin. Walk a mile in my shoes.